head and neck cancer, let me step back. Head and neck cancer affects 60,000 people in the US each year and about 600,000 people worldwide. Uh, historically, up to 80% of those patients uh, who received radiation uh, developed dry mouth after treatment. Now, as a radiation oncologist, we have gotten better in how we deliver the radiation over the past 20 years. And so now it's probably half of the head and neck cancer patients have significant dry mouth to the point that they mention it when you ask them about it, or it's their major sort of long-term complaint after they've completed all their treatments, they're cured of their head and neck cancer, wonderful, uh, but doc, I still have this dry mouth, I still carry a water bottle with me. Um, frankly, COVID sort of highlighted this in some ways to us um, because I had patients who would come in uh, and for a while our hospital wasn't allowing them to bring food into the hospital. And they would come in and they, the first thing they would say is, I need a glass of water because I wasn't allowed to bring my water bottle with me. Um, so it's a significant issue for the patients who it affects. Um, xerostomia or dry mouth is also affected by a lot of, or caused by a lot of other things. So autoimmune diseases like Sjogren's syndrome uh, can cause xerostomia. And a lot of uh, medications that people take uh, cholesterol medications, blood pressure medications uh, can cause dry mouth as well. And so it, it's possible that uh, the treatment that we develop for patients who have radiation uh, may be effect, an effective treatment for patients who need lifelong high blood pressure medicines and start to develop this as they get older. Um, not a sure thing, but it's possible that this becomes much uh, more useful for patients uh, than what we initially focused just on patients who received radiation.